think it's good. I love it. I think it's fun. Guys, I love it. It's nice to be positive. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, about things, not like like a test Just result. In general. Oh, yeah, yeah, Well, it yeah. depends on the test. That's true. That is true. Would you want to be positive for any test? I guess like, AIDS, no. Do you do you have enough of you know iron? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go through every test you could do. Yeah. Oh, pregnancy! If you want to have a baby, oh, it's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. COVID! If you want to call it work, <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, I mean, a lot of them. If you if you want yeah. to call out of work, if oh, you want the... to park real close to the store, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to have yes! a if you want to have a kid that gets you to the front of the line at Disney World, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> How about this? If you want to have a kid where they shut down Disney World and let them go on all the rides, and you're like, and here's the best part: I never have to pay for a wedding for this kid. Come on, Doc. Come on, Doc. Give me the news. Come on. We really don't like lines. We don't really don't like lines. I'd really love to move away from this topic. I've always wanted to meet Shaquille O'Neal, and I think this kid could make it happen. Sprinting in the opposite direction. <laughs> ableist. Yeah, ableist. Some people can't sprint in the opposite direction. Some of us like to be positive about whatever comes our Thank way. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Things be thingin'. Yeah. <laughs> Please open this podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of Fun Bearable. I am Brad Rohr. And I am Ray Six Months to Live Harrington. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Chuck. The test was right in between <laughs> this state. <laughs> Well, we, how, uh, what, are, what were the test results? It it just has like the emoji of the shoulder yeah, shrug, the shrug. <laughs> or the line art. Thing. Yeah. Just no, it just has a guy like this. It says "Good luck?" <laughs> Question mark. Yeah. Oh boy. So what's up, Brad? What's going on today? Uh, going on today, we're going to do a, a mail sack episode where we read uh, huh. emails that people have written to us. And but- don't we? Don't we have like a verb well, before, kind of thing? Before we do the verb thing, you, you wanted to talk about a thing. Oh, right. So yeah. I want to make sure we get that. Okay, in. we'll just bring that up right away then. Yeah, Why not? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so I have a bag from Bellroy. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, uh, so this just happened because it got confirmed. I was waiting for a confirmation email. So I'm doing a, a college uh, gig in Vermont, yes. the yes. University of Vermont in May. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you're hosting the Boob Olympics that all the fraternities and oh, sororities do. Oh, yeah. fuck. You just reminded me of something I have to say after this. I'm so excited you, you said the Boob Olympics. All right. That was an old stand-up joke from me. Okay. okay. Now I'm worried. Yeah. Oh, oh. But, uh, no, you're going to love yeah. this. Brad's going to hate it. So I, uh, <laughs> so I booked this show, and um, I have friend of the podcast uh katie arroyo she was a guest on the podcast she's opening on the show for me right she had a questionable leather jacket when she appeared with us yes she had a leather jacket that was fun to talk about katie is the coolest i love katie yeah Yeah. she's great i love her yeah Yeah, great um and you know she's a she's a good friend and you know we hang out everything's fine um but here was the thing and i was talking to my wife about this because when i was going back and forth with the university Part of the situation was like, it's this much, and the person is kind of newer in their position. Yeah. And I was explaining, usually, the university will get the hotel room or rooms uh, because they have some deal with a hotel right. in town, right? Yeah. In, in, in this case, Burlington, Vermont. I love Burlington. Yeah. I love going up Me there. Too. The uh, Vermont Comedy Club is there. I love headlining that club. It's like so much fun. The owners are killer. It's the most like comedy friendly room. It's yeah. fantastic. But anyway, uh, in this situation, I was explaining, like, because she was like, oh, you have, here's your rate, but with the hotel, like, it, do you do that? And right. I was explaining, either you get the hotel or we can do a hotel buyout. Right. Which, you know, is self-explanatory, yeah. you know? And I looked it up. I'm like, it's like 200 a room on average around that time. Call it 400 for two rooms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I realized, I was talking to my wife about this, occasionally as comics, what you'll do if you have somebody coming with you to open uh, I've done this in the past. Like recently, uh, Rafi Gonzalez was doing a college yeah, run dude. with me. Yeah, Rafi's great. Yeah. We got to have him on the show at some point. I'd love to. Uh, I had him on these shows and I said to him, like, look, here's the deal. I got to get the hotel room for all of these shows because they're in different colleges. So I just did buyouts for all those. So we don't have to go hotel to hotel to hotel. Yeah. Um, I can either pay you this much to open and you have a hotel room and I'll cover it. Or I can pay you this much and we share a room. Yeah. What do you want to do? Mm. I'm not, I have no ego in that. Like, yeah. if that's what you want to do, fine. Mm-hmm. Whatever. 
I would prefer to have my own room. Yes. You know, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, comics are no strangers to sharing rooms. Right. Yeah, spendthrifts. Well, sometimes it's the case of like for the headliner, you know, you're doing whatever. But like I've been in situations where like I have had Derek Furtado feature for me in, in Houston, Texas. And I've taken the hit of like, fine, you can stay in my room so you don't have to buy a room. Yeah. You know, pay for a room and then basically... That you're, that's you're your, like breaking yeah. even. Yeah, basically. exactly. Yeah. So I'm I'm a good person, and yeah. I'm like, oh, yes, you can definitely. you can sleep in the yeah. room with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, very funny situation happened there with a plunger. I can tell that story another time. Remind me, Derek Furtado, Houston, Texas, plunger. Got it. It's mm-hmm. very funny. Um, so uh, I was talking to my wife about this because, you know, they went with the buyout, and we're going to get the room, and now I'm going to go to Katie and say like. Here's the pay for this, and the room is covered. I'm going to make sure that's taken care of. Yeah. Because with Katie being a woman, hmm? there's like, there isn't the option, it feels like, right. to say you could make like, like, I would love to be like, but if you want to make a hundred dollars more on the, on the day <laughs> yeah. and I make a hundred dollars more, you can stay, we will split the room. You want to make a hundred dollars yeah, more. I probably shouldn't have said it that way. I probably shouldn't have said it that way. You got to spend the night with old Rainbow. If you want to make a hundred dollars more and I want to make a hundred dollars <laughs> yeah, more. Yeah. yeah. We pay each other. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it like boost your ego? Yeah, yeah it does. Uh, but uh, All right, no. give it back. Yeah, All right. um, uh, we're, we're calling this a refund. Uh, <laughs> but I, it is a it is an interesting quandary, and I was talking to my wife about it because this is a one million trillion zillion percent platonic situation. Yeah, you know, no interest either way. Right. Uh, Happily married, monogamous man. She's with uh, she's with her boyfriend, and everything's fine there. Yeah, uh, great guy. All is cool. Oh, I love he's him. Awesome. He's awesome. Yeah. He's fantastic. I don't want to get into it in personal lives and right. you know tell tales out of school. Yeah, like, he's just a great guy. Yeah, uh, no, I agree absolutely. Right. Yeah, uh, we talk video games sometimes. Yeah, uh, but anyway, um, it, it's a it's a weird situation, I think, because I fully understand why a male comic and a female comic working should have separate rooms yes but also it's odd to me because as as a comic like i get into this space where i'm like i just see katie and i see another comedian i work with who's a friend of mine right and it's completely equal right yep and we've been friends long enough where were it another comedian who is at the same friendship level with me i'd be like yeah we can share a room yeah right i've done that with so rob green rob pierce uh, every Rob, Rafi, you know. yeah. Derek, Brian, like all the comics, it's like, yeah, we we split a room, whatever, right. save some money. Mm-hmm. But it is interesting where it's like, oh no, no, not not Katie, not uh, you know any, not Maya, not any right, other, yeah, right. uh, you know, women comic friends that you have. It is an odd thing. Do you? What do you think? I think that part of it. It's weird because the truth is. I think it would really fall on the significant other's uh, approval. Like, I think it would yeah, almost yeah. be more like you'd say something like, hey, we were thinking about doing this because we'd make a little bit more money each. Like, like, what do you think? Are you, are you cool with it? I understand, like, you know, it might not be cool, blah, blah, blah. I think that that's really where it should go is just, like, asking the significant others if they're comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, that makes the most sense to me. Um, and I know what you mean. You're right. It's like there's some people that you're just, like, who are we kidding? Like this is clearly a platonic relationship. There's no yeah, thing. Yeah, that's and it's that's like, where it is interesting. We're, we're basically going to spend two hundred extra dollars out of like this weird pleasantry that doesn't mean anything. It's like a technicality. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because we're Katie, uh, Mady. Yeah, uh, yeah. traditional Her parents were pirates. Traditional male name, like yeah. Mady. Yeah. No, I was trying to think of a male yeah. version of Katie. Right. What? What would that? Christopher. Well, Katie, Kathleen. Carter, Canty. Is it is it a Charles root? I don't know. So my buddy Cunty. Yeah. <laughs> it's a family name. Wait, mm-hmm. so it is Katie? With a K. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only when she wears the leather jacket. Yes. And I would tell her, don't bring the leather jacket. <laughs> uh, I don't trust or like who you are. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, it is an interesting thing. Yeah. I do think that's an interesting thing. And I'm not trying to be like red pilled about this or some shit, right. like a misogynist of just like, I don't think it has to do with oh, misogyny. what? Just because she's a woman, she comes with an automatic free hotel room? Fuck off. You I know what yeah. I mean? Like, I it is, think but it is weird. I almost think it's the opposite direction where it's like, yeah. because it's more, it's more about you being a guy than it is about her being a woman, I think. 
Yeah, well, I I think it's I know a, what you mean. It's, it's, it's a it's a weird situation of like I see I see it as one hundred percent equality. Yeah, right. But you do have to take this one aspect in, into into consideration, and it it is just an odd situation. Like I agree, like we should probably have separate rooms. Yeah, but I am like. But why? Can I, can you I ask you a I question? Mean? Yeah. If there were three, com- if it was a huge room, three comics, two male, one female, and you had three beds, three separate beds. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Does that make it more uh, okay? Because it's like in a group setting, for some reason, probably it does. Yeah. But in that situation, then I think it's more the onus is put on the woman. And like how that's viewed. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, we went the to, same way it would be like if I was staying in a room with two other women. Well, so here's what's interesting. So I went through this. Uh, we went to a cabin in Vermont or New Hampshire, um, and we had to split all these rooms. And there were couples, and there were single people, and then there were there were couples, uh, people who were single, and then there were single travelers who were in couples but outside of it. Yeah. And. Uh, one of the people was paying for a single bed and the single bed was in a room with four single beds Mm. because we were staying in like this big cabin. Yeah. And so like me and my ex-girlfriend stayed in a a room with our, with a, with a king size bed or whatever. There was another couple and then there were the four single beds and we were like, okay, I was setting it up. And then the girl that was with us was like, oh, like I can't stay in that room. And I was like, how come? And she's like, because like I'm married, I can't stay in that room with those guys. And I'm like, well, what do you like? What are we gonna do? And I, I think may it was four. I think it was two bunk beds. Two bunk beds. And I'm like, I don't know what to say about this. I don't know what to do. What are we gonna do? Make yeah. a couple split the. It's, it was so weird. Yeah. And eventually, what happened was uh, one of the couples didn't come, so she took the, the one of the double bedrooms. Got it. Got it. But like, it was it was the exact same thing. Yeah. It's an odd situation and and i think in this particular situation because it so easily parallels other scenarios Mm -hmm. where it's like well these other comics that i've had come open for me right at this level it's with this amount of friendship we've shared a room and it's not a problem it's it's the double-sided coin of equality it's really strange if if, and and again this is just talking out of my brain if you were the feature if you a, a male Mm. Uh, presenting comic were the feature and it was a female headliner mm-hmm. would that make a difference no or you know because oh, because like in the this power dynamic yeah and this the, yeah. the power dynamic is uh, you know i think it's way more about just i know gender. I, I, if I'm, it, if I'm just asking if we were friends the same way yeah. that katie and i are friends yeah. it wouldn't enter into no, it I don't yeah. Think yeah. So. yeah and also i'm like not i don't power trip uh, right, in right, those right. scenarios well, I, hey you know i'm what just mean? i'm just throwing this no out no, there, no right? i i get it like yeah. but like if it was a if it was a comedian that i maybe didn't know that well and was like fully hiring me out to do yeah, this thing yeah, yeah. then it would be a different yes, right. i would also feel equally i think as uncomfortable staying in the room with that person yeah you know uh because regardless you, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, 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 because yeah. you don't know them super well yeah but it is a it is an interesting little quandary and it does bring me to this point where I'm like, so does that mean just like in perpetuity, whenever I have a woman open for me, you and have this to is such a shitty feeling. You have to calculate I have extra to, cost. Oh, well, it's it's automatically going to be like $200 more, no yeah. matter what. That sucks. I don't yeah. want to feel that way. I don't. I try not to think that way anyway. I always, I always angle for the two hotel rooms. Right. But certain situations come up, yeah, right? Exactly, especially if the budget is just tighter in general. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one, right? You and also, I mean? I'm not going to be like, well, I got to pay for the room, uh, so let me pay you less, or right. let me pay you, you know, this much plus pay for the room, because then I'm like, well, what are we doing here? You know right. what I mean? And also, you know what else matters? If it's in an insane weekend in a very busy city with limited hotels, that yeah. cost can jump crazy astronomical that's why rafi and i spent like four days together or whatever it was in this hotel room because we loved each other but also because it was expensive it was time when like all the yeah all the like homecoming and parent stuff exactly that's what i'm talking about college yeah so the hotels were like super expensive Mm -hmm. yeah and i was like fuck it let's just do it this way yeah but yeah, it is an interesting question. Into a interesting quandary. So I guess uh, if you were a listener, if you have been in a, a, a like a similar scenario, 
or you know if you have thoughts on this particular quandary i do think it's interesting i say kick it to the significant others i really think that that might be the key kalina said she would feel uncomfortable if that was going on i think that's that's, that's, that's and i get it and i honor that of course so i'm going to get the other room that that goes without saying you know and then i'll go to katie's room and we'll fuck yeah uh you know (laughs) but that's what i was talking about i'm like it is weird because like i go on these like work trips uh, to to do this stuff with other people like yeah marie forster and i went to nantucket to do a show right took the ferry stayed at a bed and breakfast we stayed in separate rooms but yeah. it's like we're on a fucking romantic weekend yeah you fed, yeah. You fed, and fed each weird. other strawberries oh with yeah. Your arms intertwined. yeah so what you're bringing up is basically like well if if anyone was gonna be shitty and do something this they doesn't would just change do anything. it yeah, yeah exactly yeah. that's what i'm saying so it's like is it you know, like if there were trust issues, like Kalina and I, we trust each other impl- yeah. implicitly. There's yeah. zero trust issues. Yeah, Kalina's so, staying with me while you're gone. Yeah, and I, I trust that. I trust you more than her. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> but I, uh, uh, it, it is very interesting to me because what is the delineation this is funny where's the line this is really interesting. Okay, you can both get in the same car and drive to Vermont. Yeah, you can both get a hotel room in the same hotel next to each other, possibly. right next to each other. Yeah. Have uh, a, a, meals a, an together. Adjoining door. Yeah, yeah have an adjoining <laughs> door. Have meals together. Yeah. You know, do all that stuff as long as the the bed that you're in is on the other side of the wall. Yep, it is an odd thing. I will say this though, just just playing devil's advocate, not taking an actual stance. Yep, the DA. Let's think about the slippery slope aspect of this, though. Sure. If it's like, okay, so we are going to do it, but they well, actually... Well, I plan on being heavily lotioned well, at the time, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say... It's a very slippery. So we're going to stay in the same room, and that becomes normalized, let's say, right? Yeah. Then it's like, oh, we went to this one hotel. All they have left is is one bed in the room. Right, 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 so right. It's like, right. It's like all your logic that you're saying right now yeah. also applies to that. Like, why don't we just sleep in the same bed? It applies the same way. It's like, if we sure. were just going to do it... I would be equally hesitant to sleep in the same bed with any of the male comics i work with and bring on the road as as katie to me i don't think of it as like no it's discomfort oh katie's a a, katie's a lady and i am a boy man yeah Uh uh-oh i look at it as like i don't want to fucking sleep in the same bed with you yeah you know what i mean this sucks of course now you're over there with our little dignity pillow in the middle this sucks yeah of course you know either chastity pillow whatever you want to call it (laughs) It's uh, a, a dignity pillow, so she can't see. Yeah, your chest. Pillow. And I could just be like, "No, Kalina, that's fine. We went, we went head to toe. Yeah, we went head to toe. We still scissored heavily, but yes. we went head to toe. Dignity pillow, so she can't see how small his chastity pillow is. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. The ring box, yeah. but yeah, uh, like that little pillow. <laughs> But yeah, it is Don't an interest. It. It's a weird construct. Like construct. This is, this I think it's really a strange funny. thing. I, 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 I say. I really do think you kick it to the significant others. If anyone's like, ah, I'd prefer you not, then you're just like, yeah, that's cool. That's I it. know, I know, I get it. And I'm totally open to that. But it isn't, in, like, the reason I wanted to bring it up, I'm like, that is fascinating, it this is. idea of like, but what is that line? Because within this, I'm only coming from a fully platonic place. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's nothing, nothing's going to happen, nothing would happen. Uh, it's silly to, yeah. to even think that. So... It's really difficult because I genuinely just see Katie and I'm like, yeah, it's Katie the same way like that's Rob, the same way that's this person. You know what I mean? How about this as a thought process, though? It's like, let's say there's some things that are like necessary for the job aspect of it, which is the travel and probably eating together and doing and being around each other a lot and staying in the same hotel. Yeah. And at some point, you just got to cut off how much of that there is. This is a must and it's like I'll put it this way: if, yeah. you, if you let's say you were an accountant, and you were like, "Hey, I'm going to take a trip with my platonic friend that this this girl, and we're going to go this way." If it's not necessary for your job, I don't think any of it makes sense. Oh, sure. So yeah. it's like at some point you have to cut off. But, there has to be a line somewhere. But if financially, I agree. If it would be a wash for her to come and open, if I was like, "Look, I got to pay for the hotel," so and it, and it's really expensive. It's like five hundred dollars for the night. Yeah. I can't afford to pay you now. Yeah, then it is part of the job. It like that's the I, ne- that's I, the necessity. Yeah. Hey, I'm going up and doing this show. The room costs five hundred dollars, so I have one hotel room. I need an opener. Maybe that's so. Any opener I I have mm-hmm. has to stay in the same room as me. 
then what's the fucking then it's like oh okay so all women are off the table i right. can't i can't have any women open for me if i have a a single hotel room maybe that's the question that then. sucks if it yeah. if it does become so so much of a financial burden then maybe it does cross over into that territory yeah it's a really really it's a gray area i it's, think it's one of those things where like let's say and we're just obviously being stupid and hypothetical if you're making 10 grand and you had to pay an extra 200 dollars for a room it's not really a big deal. Yeah. yeah. But if you are making fifteen hundred dollars and the, the other room is going to cost you an extra four hundred dollars, right? Then it's a huge deal, and I think maybe that just warrants more of a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it is. It is really. It, it, I think it's all context based, and it's all very. Uh, it comes down to like who, what people feel in yeah. that moment. You know what I mean? But it is. It is interesting. I, I just yeah. wanted to bring it up. It's it's you funny know? because I wonder about this whole like. It's it's really weird, but I wonder about the idea of like intimate conversation and stuff like that, where uh -huh. nothing is really like crossing a line in terms of like some sort of infidelity or something. But the idea of in you know being it's like three a.m. or hanging out or watching a movie like maybe this person you know, obviously you don't drink maybe this person drinks like you know three a.m. for other people it's like maybe they maybe they just like smoke weed maybe they drink wine you know what I mean like yeah. there's a weird general discomfort in that kind of thing you sure. know what I mean yeah 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 but it's like I'm, I'm not saying it applies to this situation I'm right. just saying in general as part of this it might be yeah it's thing. just it, it's just uh, I guess I guess for me it's odd only because. I genuinely look at, uh, the, you know, the the women I'm friends with or work with, exactly the same. So to me, it's like, it's really hard to be like, I never, I never, like, like it's like all the things you could say about me having a room with Katie, like, is exactly the same as you could say me having a room with Derek Furtado. Yeah, you know, in my my own personal fewer, view, fewer sort plungers. Of. Here's here's a difference. I mean, though. we sleep together, Derek and I. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And not that I'm saying I pull these kind of things. Not, a lot. not head to toe, but it's. it's Let's just sideways. say there's a number that would sum up how we sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's uh, our sleep number. <laughs> so obviously, I've dealt with a lot of this because of the band. We've definitely split yeah. hotel rooms, warp tour, and all that stuff, yeah. and all the, and um, there was a level of shenanigans that went on that do change when it's men and women together because of like, you know christian and his ball sack and like doing stuff like that but you're not really good that's do a different thing that's like jackass kind of fucker, yeah, fuckery yeah, that you're yeah, doing with your exactly, buddies you yeah. know what i mean like i would do brian that. bowden has seen my balls i have seen brian bowden's balls but like yeah i wouldn't do that with yeah. katie and also or, you're, that or, was probably you know, when you were younger and not i was you're, 11 you're, you're well you're, you're probably not doing the ball thing with brian now i i would <laughs> I mean, I would. Me too. Brian, yeah. I would too. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't know if you didn't. Let's do it together. <laughs> <laughs> Brian bought that billboard to show off his balls. So yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of people. Yeah. Oh, but it funny. is. It is. It's just fascinating to me. I think. It, I think it's interesting. But yeah, we're gonna get separate rooms. Obviously, yeah. that's the 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 takeaway of this thing. Yeah. I mean, we're still gonna shower together. But yeah. other than that, yeah. I don't know. It's just a weird. But it's a platonic shower. It's a platonic like, there are parts shower. Parts that it's easier oh. for someone else to scrub. Right, That's exactly. I have, I have, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of other wrinkles to this. I'm not going to bring them up in the podcast. Brad will walk out. Yes, I um, just I just think it is an interesting aspect of this that I uh, I don't know. It, it, it's a weird. Maybe I agree. it's just like in the comedy thing of like bringing somebody and doing stuff. Right. And to be clear, if I could just say now, I'll only have a room for myself and whoever has another room. Right, just a blanket. I policy. love it. That yeah. sounds great. Right. Yeah, right. But there are situations that come up where it's like I want this person yeah. to open. Yeah. However, in order to make it valuable to you, yeah, and valuable to me, yeah, we got to share a room. It's yep. definitely you know? yeah, and it's not even just a comic thing. I think it's any traveling entertaining thing. Yeah, yeah. Like I think when about, I was in the circus I, back when I was eleven. That's but, why yeah. you saw my balls. There's a band. How do you think I hung from the trapeze. <laughs> No net. There's a there's another guy's ball stretched out across it. I got a lot for this circus. There's a there's a band that I love <laughs> called the Dancehall Crashers, and it's uh, these two women are the singers, and then it's probably at now there's probably three other musicians. But when Blink One Eighty Two first went on uh, Warp Tour, Blink One Eighty Two and Dancehall Crashers split a thirteen passenger van and all slept in it. Yeah. But then again, 
does that many people bring it back out to the other right, side right, where it's like yeah. a community? Yeah. So like yeah, nothing's yeah. gonna happen yeah. because there's fucking twelve of us. Yeah, I know? think that I think it flips to that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You're so right. that's the secret. I gotta get like five more comics <laughs> yeah. along yeah. with this, yes. and then yeah. it's gonna be fine. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. But yeah, I just wanted to bring it up. No, uh, that's funny. It, it was an interesting uh quandary. Yeah. Right? I, I we mean, spent a lot of time covering it, but well, I, we got there. I have an interesting thing as well. Yeah. Is this your boob Olympics? This is from the Boob Olympics. Boob Olympics. Yeah. Now, Brad's going to have to help me because maybe sometimes his memory is better than mine. Right? Sometimes. Yeah. Um, Unless it's a situation where Chuck was right about something, in which case it is at the forefront of his brain 100% of the time. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, we have a buddy. Uh, and we're not going to. We're not going to. I don't I don't know about any. The reason we're talking. The reason we were talking about this because I don't want to spill any beans. But our buddy Brad Hertzlick. I'm not going to talk about the current yeah. thing. Um, a long time ago, why did that come up? He was talking about uh, he was he You're had to find out. He had a role in a movie, and, and he told us he's, he's, he, he he described the role in the movie. Let's let's, let's set up a little bit. He's like the nicest guy ever. He's a wicked good dude. He's like he's like fun to you can hang out with him for five this hours. This is and just everything laugh and laugh. you said about Jared Fogle before the news came out. <laughs> no, but like when we were talking about this, we were like dying. Yeah, we were thought, great, he's a great dude. Yeah. He's just a really nice guy. And okay. uh, Unfortunate yeah. name, but other than that. Yeah. He had gone, uh, basically he, he had been in a movie as like a frat guy and it was, uh, the, the element was like, uh, the element of his scene. Tell the whole truth. Was that it was like, a, you know, one of the, like the dog parties where you, you bring the least attractive person to a party. <laughs> The, the kind of thing that only happens in movies. Wait, a lot of people ask me to go to these parties. <laughs> I remember one time all these frat guys were asking me to go to this party and they all were asking me individually and I was like, I can't decide, I can't pick one. Yeah. And they were all like, no, really, I really want you to be my date to this party. Yes. So Are you're you telling me that that was a... I uh, No, that... Oh, that one wasn't. But... I dressed like a corgi. <laughs> <laughs> That's but good. The, 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 Corgi's great. The thrust yeah. of this movie role was that he was an actor at this party, whatever. Um, and so somehow Chuck... The dog party. No, yeah. tell what happened in the thing before you get to where... I, I don't... Oh, they... they yes, you do. You look like you're I, in I don't. divorce okay, court. I'll, I'll I really take over. You look like you're in divorce court right, right now. I'll you're take like, over. No, your arms are crossed and you're like, tell the full story. Tell them the whole thing. Tell. Okay. It, it was very funny. Okay, so... Yeah, go ahead. Since Brad conveniently doesn't remember this thing that he wouldn't want to talk about... Ooh, an inconvenient I, truth. I, it is I legitimately don't remember... It, so. Okay. At this party, Your Honor. he played a character, mm. a scripted thing, not you know, where they were having the fattest women, and they he was weighing them, and he was ringing a bell. Oh and, my and, god! <laughs> I remember the bell. What movie is this? <laughs> saying, well. what? And saying their weight, yeah. you know, because whoever yeah, brought yeah, the yeah. fattest woman to the party, right, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the thing I remember. <laughs> Is that, I just, uh, I thought it was, first of all, insane, <laughs> right, right? It's insane. Yeah. I can't, I can't although, even think. Although, like, I watched comedies in 2000. Yeah. I feel like, like that could be a thing. It's Wasn't weird, there a whole storyline with Allison Hannigan? She was in a movie, and she was, oh, she was big and fat. And then they, like, redid her stuff, Ooh. and then she was skinny again. I don't, I don't know. I think it was, not, uh, like, not another date movie or something oh, like I that. Oh, I didn't watch that one, I don't think. But, like... I saw a clip recently that somebody like reposted on Twitter, and sure. I was like, "God damn, that doesn't age no. well at all." For sure, wowzers! Remember the shallow Hal? Yeah, yeah, shallow Hal. That whole story is like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. For for sure. I mean, it's funny because the the actual collegey movies that I watched, yeah. which can be like Van Wilder, yeah, uh, Harold and Kumar, which I love, like they never really had stuff that that was that. Uh, offensive and weird in it you know mm. what i mean in that direction anyway and even shallow hal which i'm not like oh i'm defending shallow hal it yeah. felt like it was about the fact that he was that he shouldn't be like that yeah, he, he was shouldn't be judgmental yeah. but but the jokes are still in there sure you know for, know sure, I mean? yeah. for sure yeah. but this seemed so egregiously ridiculous the mm. idea of a character who's ringing a bell and weighing women at this college yeah, party yeah and i don't remember what the name was nope um he told us about it and every time we brought it up after that, I would re refer to the <laughs> refer to the movie as frat house fatties, right? <laughs> I would tell people yep. that didn't know about it. Yeah. When you talk to Hertzlick, he was in this movie called <laughs> frat, house 
frat house fatty. And he'd be like, no, I wasn't. And yeah. I'd be like, tell him about it. That sounds it. like a porn title. Oh, and then he would say, no, I wasn't. And I'd be like, oh, tell him what you did. And then he'd do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it sounds so insane. And it's like, the title is the least yeah. offensive thing yeah. about this. I heard it was a deleted scene in Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. <laughs> But frat house fatties and as Will a title? was like, get on this scale. Well, yeah, how about them apples? You know what I mean? Like big fat apples. Yeah. yeah. But I love the title Frat House Fatties. Mm-hmm. I love the idea that he did this insane role. I have no idea what movie this could yeah. have been or where it would have fit, even what kind of movie it would have fit right. into. I want to see that audition. Oh my god. Here's your sides. Okay. Uh <clears throat> oh, all right. <laughs> Wow, all right. Uh, that's yeah. what's uh, hilarious about it. So I'm just going to mime the bell. Okay? <laughs> wow. <Yeah>. So, <laughs> she's tipping the scale. You know, like yeah. it's, yeah, it's uh, crazy. That's, but I, that's I, wild. I just, I think I like bastardizing yeah. things. Yeah, and, you like lying is what you like Well, doing. Here, here's what yeah. I, truth. Here's, here's what I love to do. And I think that I really have given this a lot of thought. I love when I find out an insane thing. That's mm. true, hundred mm-hmm. percent true, and then I twist it fifteen percent to be a little bit crazier. This is like I love this type of humor, and then you tell someone who doesn't know about the original thing your version, and Brad's like, "Oh, Chuck's lying. Chuck's lying. It's a Chuck truth," and then the person's like, "Oh, Chuck's lying. He would never be in a movie where he's ringing a bell and blah blah blah," and then someone has to say. Well, no, the worst right. part of it is true, and he made this little thing, but the craziest thing actually happened, yeah. mm. because the person gets pulled into a crazy direction, Yeah. then they're told that I'm an asshole and I'm lying, and then they're like, well, not really, it's actually mostly true, yeah. mm. and I think that's the funniest thing in the fucking world. So the that's idea why of, I'll never go to the Holocaust Museum with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I think like, like the idea of frat house fatties, I think, is maybe my clearest example of that perfect storm. Where all I did was add a fake title, yeah. and the worst of it is 100% true yeah. and hilarious. I talked with Brad recently, and he's like, I wish... Other Chuck- Brad. Yeah, I wish Chuck hadn't commented <laughs> that on my IMDb. I have one comment on my IMDb, and it's Chuck making that joke. Oh, that's not fun. Look at this reaction. Yeah, that's not fun. <laughs> this guy, this guy's I, I working, he's trying to do his career, <laughs> and Chuck is over there. That cannot be true. I can't be that, I, that's that's what the conversation he and I had. <laughs> well, I know, but I mean, like IMDb doesn't have a community board anymore. I don't it got rid of it like over a decade ago. Okay, you can still know. write little things in. Yeah. Did you put it in the trivia? <laughs> <laughs> Is it in the trivia? <laughs> yeah, goofs and, and spoofs. Have. Continuity error. Yeah. The scale reads. Blah, 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 yeah. Blah. It, the but scale the, reads four hundred and twelve pounds. <laughs> but Brad announces four hundred and fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> This movie. The, the angle false. he was standing. Yeah. Some is it some freaks? I I don't know. I've I, never I seen I love it. when you say I don't know, like I'm an asshole for asking. <laughs> you are. <laughs> what? I'm an asshole for asking the title of the movie? Yes. Okay. I've established that I don't remember the plot of this movie, and Chuck's like, yeah, but what's the name of it? Well, I'm saying I found it. I'm saying I found yeah. his IMDb. Yes. Was it called this? Yeah. Just a fun, gentle reminder, we do have the ability to edit the podcast. What? I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. All right. You go ahead. With what? I mean, it says Brad Hurt's like pledge captain. Okay. Some freaks. Yeah. Are we gonna guess that that's probably the movie? Yes. Okay. He was the captain. Of I don't the see pledges. any. I don't see any comments All right. anywhere. No, there's no comments. All right. Well, why don't you talk to him about it? Because he's the one who said it. I'm just. I'm just right in the wrong. All and right. here he is today. No. Yes. Uh, but yeah, we do have an edit button. That's yep. fun. There's a button and it edits. All right. Are, are we? Are we ready to start the uh, meat of the episode? <laughs> No comments. More than Good. halfway through? Absolutely. Yep. Go I regret ahead. bringing up my quandary. It's all right. Yours was like 10 times as long as mine. Come on. Well, mine was like a genuine question that we were we were going back and forth about. I'm glad that you brought the thing up. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Well, I, I, you guys well, uh, like to do a title. No, you guys like to do a title. That's why there's tension. Oh, yeah. We do a particular verb. I can't remember it, though. You can't remember it? No. Something about seeing that S. Let's see. You gotta see that ass. Well, let's see. Where would you keep mail? Okay. Well, that, maybe we'll figure it out. Yeah, by yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Where well, would you keep it? We're gonna it read mail from bag. from our mail sack. Oh, well. oh, and maybe it rhymes. Read, yeah. Uh, oh, open it. Flack. <laughs> Slap that sack. Bracket. Bracky water. What is that? Is that a thing? Yes. Brackish. Brackish. Yeah. 
Crack that sack. Big Mac. Yeah. Oh, crack. That's what it was. It was crack all along. I think it was uh, three. Along along the way, it, it turns out <laughs> it was the sack that we cracked three, along the way. Two, one. Crack, crack that, that sack. sack. Confetti, 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 confetti. This email is from September 30th, 2023. But I would like to say we really are making an effort to catch up on this yeah. so that yeah. all the mail will be fairly uh, current. That's why we yeah. talked about like when we get into this episode, we are going right. Into yes, the episode. Mm-hmm. We're, we're gonna dive head first. But then you remind me of Frat House Fatties. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of this episode, by the way. No, <laughs> Brad House Bratties. VHS art. Uh, it's from John. An idea came to mind for me for how Ray might commission an art piece to yeah. celebrate his love of VHS. Notice. Yes. Yeah. To yeah. Me, Still haven't solved this problem. Well, Maybe it'll be here. To me, this is a slice of time that is integral to who he has become. What if you took that slice to, become. to a literal place? An art piece that literally takes a slice of a VHS going into a slice of a VHS player or a VHS camcorder mm. side on. You're not focusing on a specific VHS, but the VHS as a memory of a time in your life and what that did for you. Yeah. Signed, Chewy. Interesting. I like that idea. Now it's making me want to cut a VHS tape in half, mm-hmm. like sandwich half mm-hmm. style, right? Yep. Open that up and then just like, I don't know, pour resin over it. It's possible. Mm-hmm. I like it. Could you do that? Yeah. Is that a thing? I mean, it's your art. Art, art's, art's what you art make. Art is art. Yeah. yeah, art is art. Is art is art. That's it's true. A cow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as you say, "Look, this is art." Legally, it's art. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, we got an email from our buddy Matt at Sequel Productions. Mm. Uh, it's it's a link to a trailer for a movie called Butt Boy, B U T T B O Y. It is the prequel to Fat House Frat House Fatties. Um, no, Butt Boy. Um, I oh watched. Oh my god. I watched... Did you just misspeak and say fat house fatties? Yes. That can, can is I... so insensitive. <laughs> I would like to... It's funny. Can I just read the description of this movie? I don't sure. know if I ever did before. Sure. I don't know if I... I mean, like, for my personal self, I don't think I ever did. Yeah. I made up that crazy name because I, I assumed that role was just like an, a one-off, two-minute thing at the beginning of the movie in the background what's it, of a What's party. the movie called again? Some Freaks. Some Freaks. Okay. When one-eyed high school senior Matt meets 250 pound jill he falls more in love than he ever thought possible however when graduation comes and jill moves cross country to go to college she then loses over 50 pounds much to matt's surprise when he arrives to visit her while matt struggles to accept jill's new body jill begins to question whether matt is really the man she wants to date as the distance widens between them the characters propelled into a collision course with brutality and loss forcing them to confront who they are who they were and who everyone thinks they're supposed to be well, that's a weird. That's a weird movie. No, yeah. yeah. Have you seen it? <laughs> no. All right. Well, I'm gonna say to you, don't judge a movie by its description. Wow. You got to read oh, it. Oh, and don't judge a kook by his lover. Yeah. And don't uh, don't judge a movie. I watched the trailer for Butt Boy. Uh, oh, okay. And, yes. And, and yeah. so it's it's uh, essentially it seems like there is a serial killer who is disappearing people up his own butt. And uh, disappearing is it verb? Yeah, well, is it slurping them up through his. his That's, it looks like he's shoving. It's a things nope and situation. People, yeah, is this a nope? Well, this is this was is this butt doing a nope? This butt. I don't was, know why my hands are doing this, but it feels important. This butt was this doing is a nope. Film discussion hand gesture in 2020. So I think it was a pre nope. Wow. Um. Uh, lower budget, uh, yep. but you know it's like a a, a true love a, a movie for true cinephiles, and I'm like Ray Harrington is a cinephile. He's always can he's you always uh, about- can you give me a comparison in terms of um, production value? Mm, probably not. So like Prisoners, or L- is it way L- lower than L- that? way lower than Prisoners? Ooh, Madam Web. Uh, well, Madam <laughs> Web, oh, yeah. high I, production I, yeah. value. Uh, is this a The Room? Level. I, 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 you know, what? Good I, I, I think it's above the room. Oh, uh, production value. The attic. Yes. <laughs> it is. It is. So dumb. Uh, production value. The attic. Um, but yeah, I, I have not watched the film. But yeah. uh, you know, I, I did it look uh, good? Was it intriguing? It looks intriguing, but only because it is so weird. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, like Swiss Army Man is a weird concept. It is a yeah. weird movie, but it's very good. But it's very good. I don't know. You know, I can't speak to the, yeah. the yeah. overall quality. And it, of it would also boy. be hard to be like, you know, it was an absurd movie. 
but ultimately, like you would with Swiss Army Man, but yeah. ultimately it did talk about, you know, the idea of grief and letting go. And yeah. I thought that was really interesting about Butt Boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I this mean? Is, this is like... Butt I, Boy helped me process the loss of my father. It's weird because it, it, looks, <laughs> it looks like it is like a cop tracking down a serial... Uh, like a, a lone wolf cop tracking down a serial killer. Yeah. But the serial killer's methods are but. what is absurd. And they're playing it, it seems... Relatively straight. It seems like it's the type of movie that is more about like, what a weird concept I have to see it. Like teeth. Yes. Right. Like uh, rubber. Yep. And like like the ginger dead man. Mm. Yep. Or things killing. Yep. Um, so yeah, it, uh, oh Ma- Matt Ooh. specifically says you guys should check it out. Thanks killing of yep. production value. Ooh, better than that. Oh. Yeah. But boy. But boy. Uh, we have a couple Don't requests. Don't walk alone at night. <laughs> yes. Butt boy. It's like a, <laughs> it's like an early eighties horror slasher. Oh, I, I, that's like that's trailer. like that's like early seventies. Yeah, yeah, when they keep repeating the name the whole time. Butt boy. Yeah. Oh, uh, he yeah. sees you. Yeah. Butt boy. Don't. That's yeah, what yeah, it's yeah. like. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, more more movie recommendations, more indie horror movie recommendations. No this one is, is from safe from Butt Boy. This is from Eric. Uh, hey guys, I'm not a huge horror fan, not into gore or jump scares just for the sake of them, but I do love one with a good story or just a good creature movie. Here are my recommendations. These are from Eric. I love creatures. All Eyes from 2022. It's about a podcaster that loses his job after a guest, he interviews crazy or weird people, kills someone live. He is contacted by his former producer about a letter that was for him from a listener. The listener says he doesn't like him, but his wife was a huge fan. She has passed. There's a monster in the woods behind his house, and he will pay the podcaster $10,000 to come record it. I don't want to give any more detail, but it has more emotion and is a fun movie at the same time. That movie is called All Eyes. E-Y-E-S. Uh, next recommendation is called, well, it's, it's several. The Battery from 2012, Tex Montana Will Survive from 2015, and After Midnight from 2019, all directed by Jeremy Gardner. Mm. They're all low-budget, small-cast movies that focus as much or more on the characters and their development more than the horror elements. They're all very good. Lastly, just something new I checked out, Totally Killer, which just came out on Amazon Prime. I was heard a, it was not bad. He said it was a very fun movie. It's like Hot Tub Time Machine meets Scream. It stars the girl from the new Sabrina show. It was a lot of fun. Love the shows. Hope you guys like the memes and such that I post to Facebook. I look forward to checking out Cobweb. It sounds great. Thank you, Eric. Well, Thank it's you, funny. Eric. My buddy Rupert was talking to me because we went to go see uh, that movie, It's a Wonderful Knife, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which I know we talked about. And he was like, yeah, he's like, it's kind of become a trend for movies to take uh, general plots from other movies like a Freaky Friday type of plot. Yeah, uh, yeah. Obviously, uh, It's a Wonderful Life and Back to the Future and just be like, what if we made it a horror movie? Yeah. What and, if there's a slasher who done it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Totally Killer, I think, is the Back to the Future one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. it's, and he said, and we, we watched uh, It's a Wonderful Life together and he hated it as much as I did. I thought it was like garbage. Uh, he said Totally Killer was pretty good. Yeah. I'm just right. saying. No butts killed anybody though. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You guys ever see the movie Creep? No. Uh, no, I know the movie though. Yeah, I think that's a Duplass. Yeah, I think it's worth a watch. I think yeah. it's not bad. Hmm. It's yeah. basically about a guy who, uh, it's a guy who purportedly has a terminal illness. He lives alone in the woods in this house, and he hires a filmmaker <clears throat> to come kind of document, you know, some of the final days of his life. Okay. And the filmmaker takes the gig. It's all found footage, so it's really, really low budget. It's basically two characters. Yeah. And it's about that guy, the guy that hired him, and is he telling the truth? Mm, like, yeah. is he, you know what I mean? Ooh, like the Amazing Jonathan documentary. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, What's his butt doing? Yep. And there's some really good stuff. If you watch the trailer, you'll get a good idea of what it's like. And I, we, I watched it kind of on a whim, I think, a long time ago. And I was like, I thought it was really fun. Worth a yeah. watch for sure. Nice. Cool. Yeah. We're getting people in the Halloween spirit. But to be fair, I don't know when this episode's going to come out. That is Halloween. Fair. Yeah. Uh, this email is from October 23rd. The title is Saw. It is from Tara. Hey, guys. Yeah, I we wanted- really should have hit all of these earlier because yeah. they're so Hurry. holiday specific. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, guys. That means the next email sack is going to be all Christmassy. Yeah. I'm going to try and make it through the end of the year, but uh, I don't know if we will. Hey, guys, I wanted to say thank you again for the fantastic content you put out. Thank you. Thank you. My husband and I have been watching the Saw eps that you all did recently. My husband... 
My, hus- my husband is a big horror fan, and the 11 years we've been married, he has not been able to get me to watch a single one of his favorite horror movies. This is because horror movies give me anxiety, nightmares, etc., and I have never been able to tolerate them. That all being said, I am happy to report that even though I still cannot watch the Saw movies, I am able to watch these episodes you all did with no problems. My husband finally has a way of sharing his love for horror movies with me that doesn't cause me sleepless nights and paranoia. Your hilarious commentary makes all the disgusting imagery and suspenseful scenes easy to digest. Thanks again, and we look forward to many more horror movie episodes. Tara. That's, that's like the best thing we could hear. I, I The idea that someone's like, my, my, my significant other, my husband, loves a thing we can't... I can't be part of it because yeah. I, it makes me uncomfortable. And you've created a thing that's a bridge for us to enjoy it is like amazing. That's yeah. awesome. I love that. Uh, and Tara, I, I don't know the name of the podcast, but there is a podcast out there that covers the stories of horror films. Yeah. <laughs> like if if Tara was like, I want to know Hereditary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- th- there's, th- there's a podcast with two, I think, comic people uh, that will go over the plot and go through the beats of the movie oh, right. and give you all the stuff so you don't have to watch it. And it's literally coming from a place of like, if you're too uh, oh, off-put yeah. by yeah. horror movies, like you can still ingest them this way. So I don't remember the name of the podcast, Tara, but uh, check that out it's if, not, you, not, uh, if you want um, to. In Blank We Trust with Gorley and Rust? No, they just talk about like different horror stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. specific movies though now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh Jason sure, we sure. Trust or yeah, but Matt Gorley and Paul Rust, they're they are doing it just to talk about because they like yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love, I mean, Halloweenies is so great. And if you want to talk about not only the story, but the production, it's definitely not scary. They don't present it yeah, in a yeah. scary way. It's very... But it's it's not very funny and it's very mm. f- like film heady, which 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 is fun for some people. I really sure. really enjoy it a lot. Yeah. But I I do think that we probably this is just me saying this, we probably present a lot more comedy in terms of a ratio for yeah. like if we covered ten Saw movies over the course of four hours, like the amount of comedy uh, versus horror is probably pretty high. Well, yeah, that's because we're not a, a horror yeah. podcast. Well, we don't do. That's why I'm thinking she might. Uh, really appreciate this blend you know what i mean yeah. in terms, yeah, of, yeah, in terms yeah. of as opposed to knowing the story yeah for you know sure I mean? for yeah. sure by the way i did <clears throat> i don't know why but for some reason i did catch a couple clips of the saw franchise flashback that we did right man that episode was fuck those two episodes were so funny like oh we, funny yeah we were laughing it was crazy we were laughing yeah. so hard I think for some reason, filming in that VHS store and talking about these movies and filling Best you video, in yeah. Yeah. is so fucking fun. It made yeah. me laugh so much. It's so fun to take a thing that you hate yes. and tell Ray and have you be like flabbergasted that that's actually what happened. It's yeah. so much fun. Yeah. I love it. It feels more a little... It's it, it borders on maybe breaking some Geneva Convention rules. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to do... torture. I think me and you were going to do one to Brad, right? I don't know. I feel like there was something that you talked about. Maybe it was Jaws. Yeah, I don't know. You you were the one that was banging the drum for Jaws. I know. I thought I think, I think thought maybe... The you shark s- drum. I mean, yeah. maybe you saw the sequels and I thought for some reason that maybe... I have seen. That's uh, what it was them, probably. Yeah. yeah, it was nice. probably that. Uh, yeah. Which is cool. We'll do it. We'll do it with like... Real Housewives. <laughs> we'll summarize that. Please don't. The, the show. Bachelor. We're going to do a full season of The Bachelor. <laughs> now Rory showed up. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Wait, Rory C or Rory G? G. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one is uh, Fun Bearable Halloween. It's from our pal Tony. Hey, guys. Thanks for all the great Halloween shows this year. I had a blast listening and really appreciate all the work you put into making these. Thank you. I enjoyed the Universal Monsters talk a lot, and I agree it is really hard to think of a way to bring them into the modern world. Mm. That being said, I was surprised to see my state, California, Lottery, do a series of Universal Monsters tickets this year. Oh, cool. You've talked about franchise movies, but I, I only got two Frankenstein. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, fuck! <laughs> I was so close. Damn it. 
Uh, you've talked about franchise movies, but are there any one-off Halloween-themed movies you love? I really like Fun Size, which has Jane Levy, mm. Johnny Knoxville, and the kid from Bad Grandpa in it. It's a pretty simple but fun story about a big sister losing her little brother on Halloween. Mm-hmm. Another interesting one is Kenny and Company, which is pretty much pretty much Phantasm for children. It's even made by the same director and has a lot of the Phantasm cast in it. Hope all is well, Tony. Um, so one-off horror ho- slash Halloween movies. I've, I've well, I mean, horror. one-off horror, I think that's a lot of yeah, horror movies. Yeah. So one-off well, Halloween. Halloween-based. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Halloween-based, it's not even a horror movie, but uh, this always comes to mind for me. The Guest yeah. is a low-budget film uh, starring, oh, I can't remember his name, but he was the lead in Legion, the TV show Legion, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Noah Hawley creation. Uh, he's a really great actor. He was in, I think, uh, oh no, what is that British show about the rich people in Victorian t- times with the mansion? What is uh, that Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey, thank you very much. Uh, he was in that. Uh, but uh, The Guest is great. It's a fun, like, uh, throwbacky vibe. It's 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 an odd one. Basically, yeah. the, the gist of The Guest is uh, a family uh, around Halloween um their son their the oldest son uh died in the military mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and now this gentleman shows up who was in the same unit as their son like their best buddy oh right. yes and he comes and stays for a little while and things aren't what they seem oh no and it gets really fun yeah. and uh it ends in such a way where you're like i could do like three more of these oh, i'd be yeah. okay with that uh, I highly recommend it. It's really fun. The yeah. guest. You've told Check me about the that guest. One. Yeah, yeah. yeah, great soundtrack. Very synthy. It's yeah, really fun. It. Yeah. Um, we've you know we've talked about Cobweb on the show. Yeah. Which takes place around Halloween, and yeah. I, I love Cobweb. Uh, I don't know if it's just like a specific thing to me, where it's like something about Cobweb really struck me. Mm. I think everyone's kind of like ultimate horror movie on Halloween. That's just one thing. Yeah. It's probably Trick or Treat. Yeah. It's a great movie. Sure. The and yeah. it's an anthology movie by and Mike. Halloween. Yeah, I mean Halloween. Well, Halloween's not a one-off though. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, at one point, VHS was a one-off, and that now it is yeah, a cinematic yeah. universe. Yeah. Uh, Michael Doherty directed Trick or Treat, and he also directed uh, Krampus, which I thought yeah. was also yeah. awesome. Uh, my other two are. The WNUF Halloween special. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Oh, you, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. Oh, it's so... I love yeah, it so yeah. much. It's It pretends to be a VHS recording mm-hmm. of 90 minutes of like local television one night revolving yeah. around a newscast. Speaking Halloween. of, new movie uh, coming out, like I think, this week. Yeah. Late Night with the Devil. Oh, yeah. yeah. What is that? I haven't seen a trailer yeah. for it yet. So I've just seen people it's saying a, it's... Yeah, it's a movie coming out that is supposed to be like... Footage from an uh, like a seventies uh, late night talk show, oh, I love and it, and it gets horror-y. Yeah, so I'm excited to see that movie yeah. for sure. That's awesome. I love. Yeah, that. late night with the devil. I want I want to watch a trailer. I saw that. I don't know what the guy's name is, but he's like he's in, he's been in a bunch of things. He's been in um, Suicide Squad and uh, Dark Knight. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy is the main guy. Yeah. And there's one more I wanted to mention. Fuck, what was it? I just I just thought of it and lost it, but maybe I'll get back to it. Um, I did. We did watch a movie called. Um, it's not on this list. It was but called. Boy. It was called Haunt. Yes, and it's. I don't. I wouldn't call it a great movie, but if it's October and you want to watch a scary movie that takes place on Halloween, it's mm. essentially that a group of kids, like you know, like late teens, early twenties, go to a haunted house, <clears throat> and it's just that it was set up by murderers who want to actually kill people. Okay, and so it yeah. becomes a thing where they yeah, try to yeah. get out. But it's it's a very fun watch. Yeah. Sure, it's, not, it's sure. not a landmark watch. I think Cobweb is great, Trick or Treat is great, and WNF. Yeah. And I'm sure I'm sure we're all going to think of like 40 more exactly. movies as soon as we're yeah. done yeah. recording. Yeah, but those are good to start with. Yeah. S- somebody was scared stupid. I don't remember who. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's not a one-off. <laughs> <laughs> this email is from November. So that idiot got one. around. I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> uh, it's from Mike. Uh, I sent a thank you a while back for what you sent, Chuck, that may have been missed. The clown postcard still makes me and those I share with laugh. Oh, yeah. The stickers you sent adorn my recording case in a jam room of a drummer I work with who has multiple working bands in and out. I spread Uh, the word of Fun Bearable to everyone I can. Thank you. Thank you very much. That rules. Mike, muchos gracias. Oh, so I think you've been doing my Duolingo with me. Yeah. Oh no, Duolipa. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I've been doing Duolipa. I see that. And I'm like muchas gracias. Yeah. Just, just to fill in the audience, 
whenever someone orders like merch from us, like stickers or whatever, yeah, <clears throat> I try to take a real like legit thing that we've used somewhere, whether it's a script from one of our live shows or whatever. Yeah, Kleenex. Um, or a drawing that Brad has made or something right. from the Bradley drawn stuff. And I try to include it. And um, a long time ago, I did a prank on Brad. Oh, where yeah, yeah, yeah. I sent out postcards about him as a hireable children's clown for parties. And I sent and one of the fireable. postcards. Yeah. <laughs> and I, Probably more fireable than hireable, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> and I, I sent one. To this person, yeah, I included it in the thing. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank no, you, Mike, awesome. and thank you for spreading the word. You know, yeah, that's true. the uh, listen. We're grassroots, and uh, you know, the grass needs those roots spread. Yeah, yeah. right. Wait, what's your what's your phrase? My phrase: the tree is always strong. My as phrase roots. is: you're not going to believe this, but I think he's doing it with his butt. Yes, <laughs> I'm the detective in that movie. Yes. I, no, seriously, listen to me. Yeah. Listen to me. We haven't found any prints. <laughs> Don't walk away. We we haven't found any prints. We That's have hilarious. found a little bit of shit. Yes. <laughs> Everywhere we go. <laughs> the dingleberries in the lab. Um, this is... <laughs> the lab guy goes, hey, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> uh, this email is a little longer, but I'm reading the whole thing because the okay. subject line is, I'm on Brad's side. Oh, I don't oh, like this. No. This doesn't make any this sense. This is from one of your burners. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I coincidentally used the name Lee uh, in this email. Lee L., I'm not going to go into his last name. <laughs> okay. Okay. It, does he not want his name uh, it's, out there? It's, it's our buddy. I Lee think Leshen. it's out. Yeah. yeah. Lee Leshen, friend of the podcast, one of the biggest fans, the one that would fight Sabrina, the spas bear, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, probably to, de to the death. To be the number one fun To bear. be the number one. Yeah. And here's the deal. Sabrina is always full of like support and kindness and love. Yep. And Lee has all of those things, but is also like, uh, for instance, uh, while we were, as we're recording, our last uh, episode that came out was um, uh, audio only. Yes. Very rare. He was steaming mad. <laughs> steaming mad. And I was like, what are you talking about? It's it's there. And you just listen to it. And he's like, I want to watch you guys. And I was like, well, you can most of the time. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, but I want to see your faces. I want to see the expression. <laughs> It was, I think it was, a lot of people yeah. are like that. Yeah, yeah, I know. But it, it's know. fun. Like he was mad. No, yeah. I know. he was mad. So, but he's a, he's so he finally wrote in. He wrote and in. Lee, I'm with you. I like. I preferred us to be full, full together in the room. Full, full Monty. Full, full yeah, friends. Yeah, full obviously Monty. energy wise. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Hello, boys. First time, long time. Sounds like he's trying to seduce us. Yes. <laughs> oh, right out of the gate. Yeah. I wanted to throw some support Brad's way with regard to eating a quick meal at home for dinner. If you throw it Brad's way, it goes very short and it's covered in butter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have said mustard. No, not mustard. Ketchup. No. Ketchup. Yeah. With regard to eating a quick meal at home for dinner, like hot dogs. Oh, I as, think we're going down as a hot dog. I, path. too, live alone. Here's what happened. I just finished eating dinner, which consisted of reheating the following items, chicken, rice, roasted cauliflower. I was on my own for dinner on this particular evening and decided it was time to use the oven, unsupervised, for the first time. You see, I've only moved into my new home fairly recently, and I'm unfamiliar with the oven that came with the apartment. I've been using my microwave and toaster oven for a few months and been, and been getting by just fine, heating up grilled chicken bought from the grocery store pre-cooked, but decided it was time to make a big boy meal using a real oven. I googled... I talked to Lee, like... All the time, yep. I never knew he wasn't using his oven yet. <laughs> I I googled how to reheat chicken. <laughs> now I know why I didn't know. <laughs> and learned that you set the oven to preheat to 350 degrees, set it to bake, and yep. then you put the chicken in for 15 minutes with some butter on top and covered with a piece of tin foil. Great. What is this, a recipe, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty easy. Turn the oven on to preheat. Now the cauliflower. Googled how to reheat roasted cauliflower. Oh <laughs> no, we need to go through this. This and is crazy because he's like one of my best friends in the whole world. <laughs> and I didn't know any of this. And we're at that level where we can like we throw a little shit at each other. Yeah, yeah. But I, I can't do that because we're on a podcast and it would be just me. Yeah, the one but side. Buddy, if you got to Google how to reheat this shit, we got to talk. Uh, learn that you play. Place it on a pan and cover with tin foil. You can season it as well, but this, <laughs> but as this was from a restaurant, the cauliflower had already been seasoned. Then you cook at 350 for 25 you know, minutes. You know what it sounds like? Brad. Brad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've laid out the chicken on the. I, I I I know why he's telling this. Like why he's explaining it this way. Oh, I okay. understand yeah. where he's going to go yeah. now. I don't, okay. Yeah. I've laid out the chicken on the pan with the butter and the tin foil. Oh, God. I've laid out the cauliflower in a whimsical smile because I'm a child, and I've covered it with tin foil to hide it. I don't know, but Google said to do it, so I did it. 
The oven took ages to preheat. Let's then I remembered the rice. See where this is going? I Google how to reheat rice, and I learned that you empty the rice onto a plate or into a bowl. Oh, I think I do. Yeah. Add a certain amount Maybe. of water for a certain amount of rice. They lost me there. I ran it under the faucet quickly a few times, and it looked moist enough. Cover with a lid or boil and put it in the microwave for three to four minutes. I did all that while I waited for the slowest oven on the planet to preheat. Then I had to pee. This presents a problem because I have a cat that jumps on the counter when I'm not looking. And although I cleaned the counters after I put everything in the oven, the counter might have some residual <laughs> food goo that I've missed, which my cat could eat food and goo. die from. And I'm worried that if the oven finishes preheating while I'm in the bathroom, does it explode? Do I have to push a button to stop the preheating? I didn't want to overcook it, but I'm a man in his 40s, and when you gotta go, it's usually better to go than not. So I grabbed the cat, and off to the bathroom we went. She explored the shower while I finished up. We went downstairs, and the oven was almost done. The rice was already finished by this point, but it was steamy, so I was hoping it would stay hot by the time dinner was ready. We've talked about maybe having Lee on the podcast because of his background in film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning now we probably can... We don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to see if this builds to a thing. I, I have a I feeling... I know where it's going. I yeah. can feel it. I think I know where it's going. The oven... There's still so much more. Just the, I, We understand the gist of that okay. stuff, Blah, right? blah, 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 blah. Um, all right. Set, set an alarm for 15 minutes. 25 minutes of cooking left to go. Would I have been finished eating my usual meal from the microwave or toaster oven in the time that it took to prep my current meal? Absolutely. But this was about more than eating for nourishment's sake. This was about being a big boy, and this big boy was ready to get his oven on. Um, let's see here. Prep. You don't want to click on what was... Uh, I didn't want to click play on what I was watching on TV because I didn't want to risk forgetting about the oven. I didn't want to get distracted. Chicken looked amazing. Tasted even better. Um, set the timer 10 more minutes. Cauliflower. Yes, the rice is still hot. Uh, cleanup was supposed to be easy. There was some leftover butter on the foil, so I folded it up into a little pocket and was about to transfer it to the garbage when I saw it was leaking. With my free hand, I grabbed the baking pan that had just come out of the <laughs> oven with uh, subsequently burning my hand. Not too Lee, bad, though. I love this you, man. Is funny. You're one of my best friends in this the whole wide funny. world. I like it. You're leaving such a weird impre first impression. Right Seven. I like it. <laughs> Seven more minutes to go. On this read. <laughs> yeah. Ding! The oven didn't ding. I'm just transitioning to the next part. I took the cauliflower out, plated it, ran the pan under cool water after grabbing it with a hand towel this time, turned the oven off, and then sat down to eat. While eating the meal, yes, the rice was lukewarm at this point, and the chicken wasn't exactly the hottest, but the cauliflower was ridiculously good. I was wolfing it down because it was so tasty when I started to choke a bit. Not the kind where you can't breathe, but more the kind where some food goes down the wrong pipe and you violently cough it up while your eyes tear up and your nose runs. I wasn't worried that this was the end for me, because after all, I was a big boy now, and that's not how big boys go out. No, I was worried that I had to get back to eating quickly before the rice got any colder. I finished the meal, rinsed up the dishes, and put them in the dishwasher, cleaned up the dining table, and looked at the clock. It was 8.26. I started this process at 7.30. This entire thing took damn near an hour of my life. Two hot dogs are like, what, three minutes from cooking to digesting? Way more efficient. I side with Brad on this it. one. Yeah, yeah that's do, where I saw Do it more going. shows in front of houses, please. Lee. <laughs> and he included a picture of the meal. <laughs> It is a smiley, smiley face. Smiley face on everything. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. Um, Send that to me so I can put it in. Absolutely. So I think... Uh, <laughs> and I said, thank you for understanding. It's about time someone gets it. I love it. I love that he's on your side. He did tell me that uh, you know, on the phone. We talk all the time. Um, and it is so funny to have him write in. Because, and Lee, love you, man. Were that someone else? that wrote in with that level of description for that long. Yeah. I would have been like, Brad, why did you read it? Just yeah. delete it. Just yeah. delete well, it. Well, because you know? it, it proves my point. I understand. Of sometimes it's nice to just be like, to like have your, have your food, yes. get it in and, and that's it. I get that. I yeah. totally get that. That's Absolutely. Very funny. That's I, very I think funny. that is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lee, for writing in. I really do appreciate it. And I'm sorry that I have to, I have to comment on oh, how insanely in depth that is. Oh, I love right? it. Of course, of course. I get it entirely. Uh, thank you, Lee. We always appreciate you. Always in our corner. Yeah. Uh, lovely things to say, uh, you know, off air when uh, when we're talking on the phone. It's nice. <laughs> Final email of the episode. Uh, it is from December 6th. Uh, the subject line is check out charity. It's from our pal Richard. Hey, guys, I'm sorry to bother you about this. Don't be sorry. But I have to fact check something you said on today's podcast. Okay. 
Companies get no tax benefit from making a donation at checkout. I they, thought this right. Yeah. They basically oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. just act as an intermediary where you hand them the money, they hold they hold it until they make the donation to said charity, and then they make the donation. It is tax neutral for them. Right. Using this as a tax write-off would be engaging in fraud. <gasps> These companies do it because, let's be honest, philanthropy is advertisement. They get to talk about raising X dollars for the right, charity, right. and you feel a little bit better about shopping there. In the meantime, though, you get to take whatever tax write-off for the donation you're making, and the charity gets all the money. He provides a link. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. P.S. I do agree with Ray. Peanut but peanut blossoms are the best Christmas cookies. Interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is peanut blossoms the one with the kiss in the middle? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 that's the first time I've heard peanut blossom. Yeah. But uh, I'm with you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, I, I, I like I, pinoles. I think, What's that? Pinoles. That's my. It's a. It's Italian Christmas cookie yeah. with pine nuts in it. Oh, okay. And yeah. almond paste is like the main ingredient. It's really good. Yeah. I, I think I was the one who uh, was wrong uh, about this tax thing. About I like, think it was me. I think yeah. it was Ray. Yeah. Yeah. About the idea of like, oh, if you donate at the grocery store, yeah, they use that they, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's like yeah. a, it's like a uh, urban myth or whatever. Right. Yeah. But uh, I remember this because. Uh, I believe he also wrote that in the Fun Bearable Facebook group yeah. mm-hmm. to correct. Yeah. And I appreciate genuinely, this is not a slight right. uh, against Richard. Uh, I appreciate that he emailed it yep. to correct it and then went over to the Fun Bearable group and posted it there as right. well. Like, because he's pointing he, this out. Because <laughs> because he knew that we wouldn't get to the email. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For no, months. And I, and I think at that point, I, I even wrote back like, oh, that's awesome. Thank you for letting yeah. us know. You know, that's the kind of information I, I want. I yeah, want to yeah, know sure. that so I don't repeat it again. Mm-hmm. I, I want it, but in more detail and like making it seem like I'm right. Like, ex- oh. yeah, like, like you want really it drilling it down. Yeah. You want it to lead. Yeah, lead it. Yeah. Lead that email. Lead. That's fine. Uh, no, the, yeah, that, I guess that's that's the thing. Although now I feel like because it's been so long, now I want to flip and start uh, like the, the donation at the, the register thing, which I do think has become like so like ubiquitous. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a, a little bit of a hassle yeah. at this point. Yeah. It's, um, it's not a special thing anymore to attract people because well, everyone yeah. does it. And you know what it's become? It's become way easier to say no. Oh, yeah. Because, because it, it pops it, up on the little screen and you just go, <laughs> and then go back to your thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because everyone does it, it just becomes another button you hit, yeah. right? The, the tough thing, too, is that so many more businesses now also do, they ask for tips at the end of it. Yeah, yeah. And it's almost like, I don't really, how often do you go to a place and buy a thing without, hey, do you want to spend more money on this? Right, Whatever right. it is. Yeah. It's like never. And for a spendthrift. Oh, my God. Yeah. I uh, When I would go to Taco Bell all the time, they would do the thing where, oh, you can write your name on this thing and we'll put it on the wall. I would, yeah. you know, at the time we had the Chuck and Brad podcast, I would write the Chuck and Brad podcast oh, yeah. or chuckandbradpodcast.com. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I just spent a dollar for free advertising. I would write the name of another <laughs> charity, a competing charity. Yes. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, sure, March of Dimes. <laughs> yeah. March of Quarters. Children's Hospital yes. of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> This uh, one yeah. hopes and, that kids get diabetes. And, you know, the... the this part that part is a myth yeah like that they can write it off i understand that and yep. accept that and want everybody to know that what's not a myth what is happening and is an issue mm-hmm. is the self-checkout growing mm. ah. the self-checkout growing and companies now understaffing registers yep. and trying to push everybody to ov- over to the self-checkout target I I I learned oh, I about this recently. There's a subreddit that is all for Target employees mm. to talk to each other. Which, yeah, my girlfriend. Hell yeah, my girlfriend's a Target employee. Yeah, that's right. Right. And she's a safety manager, so she's not in the same place, but right. she's a safety manager of the warehouse. Yeah. It, so they they I love this idea of a subreddit. That's where I'm like, yes, internet, good. Yeah. That that's sort of like we we can't unionize, but like we're unionizing. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, we're yeah. talking to each other, and I stumbled on this thing. And it's all like there was a whole discussion happening at the time talking about uh, when the self checkout uh, registers came in, and slowly the managers started pulling because it's a mandate from from corporate, corporate yep. started pulling people from the registers. There's cashiers aren't there, and they're like woefully understaffed. Yes, and they're talking about it, and then usually there'll be a rush, and then you hear like you know available associates 
you know, come do register work. And there are other employees that aren't cashiers that are like, so now we have to leave our job, yep. go help with this. And then we get shit on because we didn't finish restocking yep. Yeah, and all this stuff. And like management hides because they know people are pissed off that it's happening. Yep. After I saw that, anytime I've been in Target, I fucking like look at the register situation. Yep. There's a line. Oh, it's crazy. A line. A huge line. And there's... 30 registers oh it's all crazy. closed yeah. with like one person working it's crazy and then one person helping guide people to each self-checkout yep. that's exactly it's, how it is in seekonk target yeah right that's too. what's going on the, the, the seekonk target is more frustrating the swansea target you know it's down the street mm -hmm. i i rarely have an issue there but seekonk it's like oh i i if i go there in the middle of the day i'm going to wait oh yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it sucks yeah. like what it's a very, shitty very situation and it sucks for the uh plus the they employees. took the pizza hut out of it so like what am i supposed to eat yeah pizza hut in a target oh yeah oh i my understand God. a starbucks well he's going he's going from gas station rib sandwiches yeah to pizza moving hut up. at target moving yeah. up well he's like well if i eat it in a different store then it's not like i went to that thing like yeah. i'll eat a mcdonald's in a walmart because then it's not fast food <laughs> it's uh, walmart food walmart has groceries <laughs> Like, like Walmart has groceries. I have strawberries. <laughs> it has groceries. Yeah. I'm basically eating healthy. Yeah. And uh, I bring a hot pocket. Yes. <laughs> and I put it in my pocket. Uh, can you heat this up? <laughs> Make it hot? Guess I got to sit on it again. Right now, it's a cold pocket. <laughs> he puts it in the little... Oh, no, butt boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He puts it in the little That's microwave the sleeve story. and then yeah. puts it under his arm. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm going to go shopping. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you doing cooking <laughs> yeah this uh, was a lot of fun we learned yeah. a lot here I we learned it. some we, I love we the got some side. factual information in we goofed we talked about uh uh you know men and women and like this quandary that's happened Absolutely. we talked about your friend being in a horrible movie uh -huh. right yep uh it, it's yep. really we couldn't locate the, the comment i was criticized for mm -hmm. Yeah, you this have to is talk great. To him about it. <laughs> and I also learned more about my friend. Yes. Truly. Yes. Like Lee. Like MySpace doesn't exist anymore, but when you you have your like top five or yeah. top eight or whatever it is, that's top eight. Like he's he's in the first column. He's yeah. in the front row. You know what I mean? And to know that he can get that pedantic about describing his meal, I love it. I do have a sneaking suspicion he may have been. Uh, inebriated, a little, a little inebriated. Okay, not, not, nope. he's not a drinker. That you know what? You know what it I'm read saying? is completely sober to me. <laughs> it sure did. Oh, it was sobering for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for Ray. He was wearing yeah. he was wearing a cat in the hat style. I'll tell you who hat. I'm not That's sharing a hotel room. Yeah. With <laughs> All right, man. That was great. We well, did it. Thank you very much for uh, reaching out, and, and please do reach out to us. Yes. We we will get to it. We are. You know? we're, we're getting pretty close. If you're yeah. in line, stay in line. We will get to your we, emails. This is like Target. Yeah. Yes. We're <laughs> over work. Right now, our email is self-checkout, which means you just write us, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But we're, we're, we're digging through. Yes. We're digging bird, through. bird by bird. Uh, thank you all so much. We do appreciate you. Funbearablepod at gmail.com, or check yeah. us out on socials at funbearablepod. For Ray Harrington and Chuck Staten, I'm Brad Rohr saying thank you so much, and we're sorry for being fun bearable. What? I didn't want to say anything when we were doing the episode, yeah. but I was super embarrassed during that um, heavy set gals party frat fraternity thing. I was I was really upset about that because I was in that. Well, what role did you play? Fat girl. <laughs> <laughs> frat house fatty number three. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> Number four. Big I, fatty. I thought. I thought it you, was big fatty. I thought you brought a subtlety to your performance. Thank you. That was that was really like it, it popped. Well, I think it was easy because I needed to show feeling humiliated, <laughs> and I was. Yes. Also, can I point this out? Craft services on that movie mm -hmm. sucked. Oh no. <laughs> I think that's they it. put their cauliflower in the shape of a frowny face. <laughs> there was no cauliflower. Ooh, read, we can... read the room. Yeah. <laughs> Let me put it this way. That craft services table would be Brad's wet dream for foods. <laughs> Hot dogs and peanut M&Ms. And craft singles. 